Hi, I'm Peter Sullivan. So the question is, where do we go from here? So we're going to talk about requirements for healthy, for technology and healthy buildings. Um, we basically evolved in the Earth's natural magnetic field. Unless you're an astronaut, you've been in this the whole time. So the Earth has a natural magnetic field that varies slightly based on uh, lightning strikes. Uh, and the Earth has, we also get exposed to natural background radiation from the Big Bang, actually, but a very low level of it. Now, though, our built environments have magnetic fields and electric fields, uh, dirty electric electrical noise of so variations in these fields and harmonics, and a lot of wireless exposure. And these are dramatically different in uh, degree and frequency, and they're constantly on, and they're moving in different directions than what we naturally were exposed to. Um, so basically, we've got four different things we were starting to measure, magnetic fields, electric fields, uh, dirty electricity or power quality we're going to talk about, and wireless, because the uh, magnetic fields, electric fields, power, um, wireless radiation, those are starting to, we're starting to have some standards, standards around those. They, um, they're, they're conflicting. But power quality, something that Dr. Sam Milham uh, wrote a book about called Dirty Electricity, is really one of the areas we don't have some requirements on. And I would say that it's actually, in the built environment, one of the factors that likely has the most impact. So if you have a lot of noise in your electrical system, you may hear uh, uh, lower audio quality. If you're an audiophile, lower video quality. Um, you may hear ambient noise, buzzing and humming. I mean, I think we've all been in those buildings. So you've been in the buildings with the buzzing, the humming, the harsh refrigerator noises. Yeah. Um, you may have vibrations. So a lot of these electrical frequencies may um, become vibrational when they work with motors and other elements and transformers. You may see light flicker. You may see the quality of your light change. Um, you may even have impact of air ions because a lot of these field effects can move these charged particles in the air. You, surprisingly, you may even have an impact of thermal comfort. So a lot of the frequencies that it can ride on your power in your building can be microwave band frequencies. So when we've introduced some mitigation, some people immediately feel cooler when we start filtering out some of these microwave band frequencies. That, you know, essentially, there's nothing stopping our buildings from becoming microwaves. Think about that. Uh, and so an electrical efficiency and cost, some of these high-frequency noises, again, change the power factor and impact the efficiency of the electrical, which is a big concern. Uh, and again, it also can impact just the felt sense of being in the building. A lot of these high-frequency noises create uh, anxiety. It can create kind of a tension and stress in people um, that you may sense. You may think it's the buzzing lights, but it may be the exposure of the field effects so it's, um, it's nuanced and subtle, but I find actually about 95% of people can feel these effects. Maybe 3 to 5% of people can't feel them in sensitive environments. So almost everyone assumed this stuff was safe. Uh, I'm, I was in Silicon Valley. I was playing with all this tech. Some of the designers of cell phones are friends and acquaintances. I had everything first, uh, if not was designing it myself. So we, we made some false assumptions about safety, uh, including myself. Uh, I was doing everything I could to be healthy. I was um, eating well. I was detoxing from to chemical toxins. I was exercising. I was living in a healthy building, yet I stopped sleeping well. I lost a lot of weight. This is a photo of me at 130 pounds. In 2009, I was 131 pounds, 30 pounds lighter than I was now. Uh, I was really weak, not sleeping well. I cracked a couple teeth. So it was a really tough environmental illness. I was exposed to multiple things. There are several people in the room who have gone through this, if not worse. Um, and the final thing that I, you know, because I trained early in my career as a troubleshooter, I was systematically going through everything. And I luckily found Dr. Milham's book and started looking at dirty electricity. And that's when I turned the corner. I gained 10 pounds back in about a month after I evaluated that. And I've you know, been much healthier ever since that. So again, it, this sounds very stressful. Um, and it sounds very intense. There's a lot of things to, to look at and do, but I'll um, just give you the, the adage that awareness is more than half the battle. If you're aware of this topic, you're more than halfway there. You're, you, you, won't blind, you won't be blind like I was for decades working in this and suffering, trying to fix other things and doing everything backwards. So um, 
I would say take the time to educate yourself. There are a lot of good resources out there. Start turning things off uh, and moving away from things. You know, obviously turning things off is one thing, but distance is your friend. Every time you double the distance, you reduce exposure by 75% for wireless because it drops off um, non-linearly, exponentially. And start looking for safer solutions like eco Wi-Fi or hardwired systems. So what can we do for health and safety requirements going forward? Um, obviously, we need pre-market testing instead of making assumptions. These things should not be, we shouldn't have um, FDA devices going through rigorous uh, testing for a five-minute exposure when our buildings are giving similar exposures to microwaves or whatever, and there's just, it's just the Wild West. Uh, we need to work towards safe solutions, safe technology, and uh, Frank Clegg really pioneered this field of like working towards something positive. It's, it's like automobile safety. We love cars. They can be dangerous, but let's make them safe. Um, so we want to start, at least at the beginning, measuring things and mitigating them and just comparing them to the natural standard, which is our background natural radiation levels. And for, for power, when we, it's not just the wireless radiation, but when we plug devices in, they can create noise on our electrical systems that's distributed through the entire building. And then those magnetic fields go right through your body like an MRI machine, constantly. And I found these impacts can be much more dramatic than even the air quality work and the mold work that we've all done. And, and they can happen in seconds just by pulling a plug. So uh, we need to obviously work towards no health effects. And, and how can we do this in a simple and safe way that's trustworthy? Because we have so many health effects. I think the Navy back in 72 had found 140 some health effects even back then. How do you quickly and simply test this stuff in a way that people can trust?